back at the 2016 uh, Rio Olympics, I mean, obviously there are a host of things that came together um, that led you to winning gold. But can you pick out any major things that you think the team got right um, in the in the run up to and during that sort of that campaign? I think um, actually so much of the work was done in the build up to the campaign. Um, you know, we'd covered every base, we'd crossed every T, dotted every I. But if I think very specifically around, you know, what tangibly did we do that put us in a good place? Um, you know, after the the World Cup where Yes, Jeremy. Germany came eighth and we came eleventh. Um, you know, it was terribly disappointing as England. We'd we'd really had let ourselves down, let one another down. And I remember coming back together as Great Britain and it we really felt like we were at the bottom of a, you know, the most enormous mountain we had to climb. And we we had a new sports psychologist join us, Andrea First. Now I think she was absolutely pivotal to our success <clears throat> in Rio. Um, and we did some really specific project work. Um, I know it's been wildly spoke about. Uh, we, we reset our vision, our values and our behaviours, but they really became, you know, the foundations of what we did day in, day out of the mission. We quite literally learned to win on the training field. And I think there's a few things that really stick out for me. One that happened in Rio and one that happened before we left. And the first one before we left was we did this, project it was so simple but it was around understanding our role for the team and you know really understanding what it was and sharing what that was and also sharing our super strengths and not only we had did we have to do that for ourselves we had to share it with our team members and you know there was a few of us that stood up and you know what we thought we did well or what we thought we were there to do for the team actually we weren't in agreement. It was like, no, this is your strength. This is what we need from you. This is what we'd ask for you. And, and that took time. It took a lot of conversation. But what we had at the end was a whole squad that knew exactly what their job was. You know, it didn't matter whether it was, you know, the first game of an Olympics or an Olympic final, that was your job. And I knew how to do it well. And so I think that was pivotal. And then I, I talked about, you know, we really learned to win in our training venue. We, we learned at Bisham. And, and I'll never forget the Olympic final. <clears throat> now, you know, we all saw it. Obviously, Laureen, you were you're obviously there and you'll agree with me, I'm sure. Holland were outstanding. You know, they were playing very well the entire game. We were defending for our absolute lives. I mean, I think we had three shots and scored three goals, but, you know, a game's a game. But I remember in the third quarter, the whistle went and we ran into um, Craig, who was our, the pit side coach. Danny was up in the stands. And, and I remember thinking, my goodness, we need to, change something tactically here you know we're we're not going to win we need to change something and Craig got us running in we ran in he was like put your arms around each other and we did um and then he just said look at one another and I just remember thinking hell Craig we need a hell of a lot more of a look right now come on you know give us some tactics we need something and but he just said look we're back at Bisham it's a Thursday morning find your way to win and actually in that moment, what, what he did, which was so magical, was just capture the fact that we'd, we'd learned to win away from the tournament. We had the skills. We knew what our jobs were. We knew what we needed to do. And we needed to do no more or no less just before, because it was an Olympic final. And I think for me, that, that sums up our whole campaign. Yes, you have to perform when it comes to the pressure moments, whether it be in sport, whether it be in, in any areas of our life. But actually, we can't ever expect that that will just happen. It, it really is the hours that you put in before. It's the, the culture that you build, that you, you breathe, that you dream of. It's, it's the relationships that you build so that when you get to that moment, you know what your job is and you do it like you've done it day in, day out um, for all of those hours, months, weeks and years before. So for me, it's those two things really sum up our campaign. Wow. As always, that's given me goosebumps. Thank you for that. Um, a slightly sort of, you know, off, off the wall um, question. Um, what was a job that you that surprised you that you didn't think was part of your, your you know, when you were talking about specific roles and things that you, you didn't know were your role? What, what was that? So it wasn't, it wasn't necessarily, um, so I'm a forward, obviously. Yeah, I, I was a forward. My job was to, you know, essentially um, create outcomes in and around the circle. Um, and of, of course, that was a thing I shared with a group. And then I can't remember whether it was Danny or whether it was another player. 
and they just said yes that's one of your jobs and, you know you know Jamie will probably laugh at this as a coach but then it was just a reminder that my job is also to put the fullbacks under so much pressure that they can't play and it sounds really simple but my <clears throat> focus was on an area where yeah of course it should be but my role was bigger than that and there was more to do than that and it was it's a really simple example but imagine in your team that happens to four or five players and their attention is now focused in two areas that improves performance that improves my you know as soon as I've said that's my job my goodness I'm gonna have to do it well so I'm just more on it in a game so you know it it's simple but often problems that we need to solve have a fairly simple solution they just have to be talked about and worked out and then when you do you're in a much much better place it is pressing that reset button, isn't it, as well, and getting everybody to, to rethink yeah. what they're doing. And um, reminding the forwards that they have to defend, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> um, looking back to five years ago, now, what are your overriding emotions when you remember that evening? Oh, honestly, life is so different now. I sometimes look at the picture and check that it's me. <laughs> um, my, my overriding emotion is just an overwhelming sense of pride. I just feel so proud to have um, been a part of just such an extraordinary group of people, of humans, of coaches, of players, of support back at Bisham. Um, I look back in disbelief and, you know, obviously I, I retired a year ago and lots of people said, I'm so sorry about how you retired. And I just was like, no, I had the most incredible career and I don't have any regrets. Mm -hmm. I just look back, I feel very proud to have yeah, represented my country with some quite extraordinary people. And I look back at that night in particular and yeah, I have to pinch myself a lot, but it will it will be etched in my memory forever. <laughs>